Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is episode number 16. See, I lost count. We had a hiatus for yeah. about a month. I'm here with okay. my good friend, Doug. Doug, dude, how you doing? Good. You know, I've been kind of missing out on our conversations. Uh, I haven't been really checking up on the stories like I should have. Uh, so I'm glad to get back to it. We got a lot of good things to talk about today. We took a break, man. It's, we're going to be kind of rusty. But yeah. but this is what I have to this is what I got for you, man. Reunited it's gonna and be good. It feels Let's get so into it. Good. All right, you wanna start the screen share. Nerd News. Yeah, let's uh let's start this screen share. So we took a break real quick because family stuff had yeah. graduations and we've been off like a month now. Uh nice break, it was good, but we're probably gonna be rusty today. So that's just one of those things that we're just gonna have to deal with. Uh, So just kind of bear with us. We have tons of news to go over uh, and then we will uh, get into our main topic, which is really just kind of to catch up since we haven't talked to each other for a while. Uh, So you'll have to ignore our little ramblings (laughs) along the way. Oh no, we got this. I have confidence here. I hope so because I feel rusty. So, like I said, we have been gone a little bit, so we go back to the 1st of May with the Apple iPad event. Uh, All the news from Apple's Let Loose event. So, as we're scrolling down here, Apple has released several new iPads. Uh, They look really good. They've got their base iPad, a new iPad Air, and an iPad Pro. Uh, Looks like that iPad Pro is just super overkill unless you're doing a lot of uh, photos and videos and you just need that uh, much power in a a tablet device. Yeah, this entire event was dedicated to the iPad and they've been doing that. They'll have one event that's dedicated to their workstations, their computers, one dedicated to mobiles with phones, one dedicated to you know, the iPad, and I think the next one we'll talk about here in a moment is um, the Worldwide Developers Conference, which is dedicated to iOS, which is the software, the operating system. So this one was all about that, and you're right. The big thing about this was they put the M3 chip in some of these devices, yeah. like the Pro model. Now, the M3 is our latest, uh, you know, on the screen here, we're talking about the M2, but it's nuts. I think it was the iPad Pro, which is even thinner than it was before. And it was already like super thin. I think I have mine here. Mine's like a second gen. But it's nuts, man. They're putting desktop class processors inside the iPad. I mean, yes. which makes total sense. If you've ever seen the iMac, see how thin, how thin the iMac is? It's just a monster screen, but it's super thin because, well, it's basically an iPad. <laughs> That's what they're doing with it. So I don't know. Did any of this sway you at all for an iPad? I don't know. Um, I've got a really nice uh, Tab 7 FE, I think, Samsung. Yep. It's uh, pretty powerful. does everything that I want to do. But so it's good if for I, you. you know, switch uh, ecosystems, uh, I have been looking at the iPad minis. Uh, I know they haven't updated those in a while, but uh, as far as size, you know, they make some tablets now that are 16-inch uh, tablets. That's huge. So it is. I don't need anything uh, that big. And I was just railing about the M3. I forgot right here. M4 was also announced. Dear Lord. 50% faster than the M2. You know, I have an M, M1 in this bad boy right here. I have an M1 in my, and this is a iPad Pro. I love this thing. And it has an M1 chip. This thing is freaking fast. It is so amazing. I can't imagine. This How would be faster. Yeah. 75% faster than what this is. And this thing's only like two years old, maybe? Dude. So what's kind of your daily drive with your iPad? So, you know, I had it for different reasons. Um, so I was at a point where I had a MacBook Air. Loved it. Loved it. But for about the same price, if not a little under, I was like, well, I could just replace my laptop with a tablet. Yeah. And so that's what I did. and. So far, I'm very happy that I did that. So it pretty much has replaced my uh, computing needs on the go because I was traveling a lot for work and I went in something super ultra portable. And this was even more portable than the Air. And the Air is like super thin and portable. But I wanted to have the option taking notes um, by writing. 
So that was my driver behind it. And now I was using it heavily for work because work allowed us to do a BYOD program, which is called Bring Your Own Device. That all has changed uh, when my company had gotten bought out, but it's about to go back, thankfully, soon uh, to where we'll become an independent company again, and we can go back to using our own devices. And I, I miss using my personal iPad for work purposes, honestly. It's just such a dream to work on. So it was a laptop replacement for me. That's why I did it. Yeah. And uh, man, I, I loved it. it it's, again, it's an M1 Pro. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I just I look at what they're doing and I'm just like, wow, well, I guess that's great. If I ever want to upgrade my iPad in like another, I don't know, three years or two years, I'll get a crazy, ridiculously fast one, I guess. But so it was it was cool. I wasn't really interested in a lot of because I'm not interested in upgrading yet. Uh, but it's nice to see what they're doing. Um, you know, they're adding LiDAR on these for the, you know, the laser. One interesting thing was the pen. Um, since I'm not an artist, I don't know if I would use I do do a lot of writing, but it's for notes. And they were showing it here on the video. But what's really cool is it detects the tilt. And I saw a video that this, this guy had hovered the pen over the paper. And they're actually showing it here. And as you twist, it knows the direction of the way that you're twisting. Yeah. So you can really capture somebody's true handwriting capabilities or if you're an artist it, it's pressure sensitive i'm not into art but i could see where this would be a game changer for an artist so they they do have a new pencil uh and it does this cool barrel roll technique that it has not been seen in styluses before so they are innovating in this space usually it's wacom is the leader in, in all of this yeah the thing with the pen i if i had an ipad i would love to have a pen just to do the things that can do but that other uh, price, you know, over a hundred dollars for I think the uh, Pen Pro, if I'm saying the right name. You're right. You're um, right. You know, it it's doesn't come with it. We need to get that price down, which I'm sure they're making pretty good money, and I'm sure there's a lot of technology in their pen. But Samsung, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, has sent pens with their Note devices. Now their Ultra devices, and uh, I have a pen with my tablet. Yeah. Now they do have different price points that they're showing here. Like this one here is the Gen 2. This is Gen 3. So you're looking at, they said 130 for the new fancy one. I think this Gen 2 is probably 100. And I think you can get the original OG one um, for yeah, uh, like, like pin 50 USB, bucks. I believe it was like called. Yeah, uh, it had a USB, USB charge on. The big advantage to Gen 2 and up is this is wireless charging. Yeah. So when you click it to the top of the iPad, uh, it charges, uh, and you don't have to to charge it separately. Uh, so that's that's pretty nice. Um, so you were all right. It'd be nice if they included it, but they do throw a lot of tech in it that you're not going to have on a lot of other styluses. Again, unless you're using like a Wacom tablet or something like that, uh, and you're specifically like an artist or something. So yeah, gotcha. Yeah, it was it was cool. I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, the, the the ones coming out, but I'm not really in the market for it. But it was kind of to see what they're doing and how how they're innovating. Absolutely. And I just looked up the Pencil Pro price, uh, 129 for that one, 79 for the 79. USB, and then 129 for the second gen. Kind of there went out go. of order. There, yeah, that, I get you, though. I get you. So while we were out, not only did Apple have an, uh, an iPad event, it seems like May was just full of announcements. Google had their I.O. 2024 event. And I tell you what, again, AI dominates everything. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. You watched this one. I, I haven't seen all of it. You watch most of this, right? Yeah, it uh, it's um, not really a hardware event. They focus big time on AI and all the things that AI could do. Uh, they had this guy on here. He's the one that uh, TikTok famous talks about. Uh, there's some cuss words like "get out of bed," "go to work." I'll just leave it at that. But <laughs> that was weird to see him starting the event. That was weird. But back to yeah. the thing, they uh, talked really about AI. You know, they now have uh, Circle to Search in their uh, Google Gemini That's pretty and cool. Google Assistant. Mm -hmm. They have their video search. Um, if you scroll down, one of them, uh, there's an issue with this guy's record player, if I'm saying that right. And uh, he just asks it uh, what to do. So it'll say Google Lens. I don't know how far down it is. It looks like it's pretty far down. Oh, it's right below the main video. Is it? All the way to the top. I might have hit play on it. I don't know. Up oh, there. Oh, right there it is. There it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So yeah, uh, what it's showing for those uh, not uh, watching video is you can uh, ask it a question while you're recording video and it will take care of it. So he has uh, in this example an issue with his uh, record player arm. Ask Google while the video is playing and it tells him how to take care of it. So stuff like that's crazy. Like a live assistant. Now yeah. it's important to note that ChatGPT, this is not unique to Google. Chappy GPT is doing this now, especially with their 4.0. I've told Doug I've played with the chat GPT quite a bit. But the idea, though, is typically you would record a video of something uh, and then you can upload it into chat GPT and say, hey, you know, what is this? Help me yeah. with it. My car's making a sound. Uh, that sort of thing. It's, it's identical, except this seems like it's more real time where you can, you know, flip on the camera. Google accesses the camera in real time, looks at what you're looking at and then responds based on that. So all different variants of the same thing. Yeah, so kind of going through the rest of the article, it's uh, all about AI. Not much really for us to talk about. There's a lot of stuff still in development, but uh, pretty cool. Uh, you talk about ChatGPT. I think I've actually used it more on my phone than Gemini. Uh, yeah. The responses it gives me, I think, are better. Whether they're true or not, you know, sometimes I try to do a little fact that's a, checking. That's a problem with all of them be honest with you uh hallucination and the idea if you haven't heard that term before it's just that the ai wants to give you an answer so bad so it'll create answers you know Mm -hmm. and they're not always true and that that is not exclusive to one it's all of them that seem to have this issue uh and they're trying to train it out you're going to see this though between microsoft you know uh meta has their own uh, and, and the funny thing is is apple they say is developing one but the more i've read is what's really going on is uh, Apple is is getting in in partnership with OpenAI for uh, ChatGPT, just like Microsoft. So it seems like um, ChatGPT is going to be the main competitor to Google. Why Google's worried, you have to remember, is because if you've noticed, and a lot of people have complained about it, when you do a search right now on Google, the AI is giving you the search results versus you just getting a list of pages like you yep. did before. It's pissing a lot of people off. Yeah, I don't yeah. like it. I mean, every... you can turn it off. You can't turn that yeah. off. I, yeah. yeah. But um, the reason why they're doing that is because they see what's coming down the way. They're seeing that with OpenAI, it's able to do, it, it threatens their business of being able to be a search engine. Let's just call it what it is. It's the first time ever. And it used to be Microsoft whenever they had, uh, you know, Explore and they were Bing. Bing is chat GPT now. Yeah. So it, by proxy, that makes chat GPT Google's competitor when it comes to browsing and searching the internet. That's just what's going to happen. So, and if Apple integrates chat GPT into Siri, like oh the rumors gosh. are saying, oh, yeah. it's, I mean, this competition is, is getting kind of nutty. Now I don't think we have the article in here, but I did read, I was talking about people getting mad uh, about the Google searches. The other thing is Gemini was telling people not only wrong things, but dangerous things. Um, somebody had wrote in there, Hey, when I make pepperoni, uh, it falls off the pizza, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't stick to the, it told them to use glue. Yes. yes. I, I remember that <laughs> glue your pepperoni onto your pizza. Uh, and you know what? The sad thing is there's idiots out there that probably do it. Yeah. <laughs> so they're trying to train it out, but this is the trade off of probably what's going to come of this is it will get better over time, but, uh, you know, I will say I'm very impressed with Google's ability to, like you said, circle photos and images or circle things and have it searched. And that's they've had something like that for a while, but that's really coming a long way for them. So we'll see how Gemini stacks up to, to GPT in time. Yeah. So I think talking about chat GPT and Gemini, I'm going to throw a curveball. If you want to skip ahead to uh, what to expect at WWDC. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll uh, talk about that next. So the rumor, you said that uh, ChatGPT may be joining Siri. Well, everything I've read, and you know I get excited about these keynotes, uh, the companies uh, sharing what uh, innovations and technology they have. So that's the big rumor now is AI, AI, AI. So right Apple, um, on their event tomorrow, it's uh, noon Central Standard Time. Tomorrow Go is in take a watch as it June tenth. Uh, today mm-hmm. is June ninth when we're recording this. It'll be the tenth oh, on yeah. Monday. You yeah. know, yeah. Just I'm in case you're listening to this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so that's tomorrow, summer. June 10th at uh, noon Central Time, uh, AI is going to be probably the main uh, talking point for WWDC, the Worldwide Developers Conference for Apple. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty excited, you know, um, talk a little bit later. I've thought about joining Apple last year. I, it's still in the back of my mind, and uh, this well, may help me even more. And I highlighted on the screen one of the other rumors is the what they called entitled a green bubble power up. Apple is finally adopting the rich communication service RCS as the default for iMessage, which was their um, proprietary way of messaging within their network. And of course, that caused blue bubbles if you had somebody with an iPhone, green bubbles if you had somebody who was an SMS text with uh, Android. So they're saying that this will change, will arrive as a part of the next iOS 18. That means soon. I'm going to say the fall. It's going to be my guess. Maybe I'm wrong. They could, it may be more ready. But uh, iPhone and Android users can set aside their blue and green bubble differences and instead send each other longer text messages and higher quality photos. Now, this was something that bugs me because there's been times I've sent videos to my father-in-law who has an Android. I've even sent things to you, but I think you turned on a compatibility mode or something, but it makes the video and the photos all grainy if you're an iPhone person and you send it to an Android. Yeah, I know a couple of Android updates ago, we were got the ability to react and get your reactions to pictures yep. and stuff. Now, still, I believe that you can react to the picture itself. I cannot. So yep. if you send me a picture, I cannot react to it. I can only react to text-based uh, communication. I only found out recently. Did you know you can stack emojis? I did not know that. I was playing with it. Uh, now, I don't know if you can on uh, Android, but the idea is if you throw an emoji out there. So if you threw a volcano. Yeah. And then you go find another emoji, like the sun emoji. Just hold your finger down on it and then drag it on top of the emoji you sent. And then the sun will appear wherever you left it. And you can create a little scene. You can keep doing that. That so. is No, we can't do that. <laughs> we See? have an emoji kitchen where you can put two emojis together to make a new emoji. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's uh, okay. So <laughs> one thing, you got me off track now. I don't like it, but uh, when I make phone calls on my Android, I can now do clapping, uh, like a rim shot, like a da da Sound effects? Yes, while I'm calling. Like, so if I'm on a phone call with you, yeah, you can me... kick off sound effects. Yeah, it's uh, very strange, and I think it's a party trick. I don't know why they added it. <sighs> But uh, let me try really to find odd. an article. Where... Okay. Well, while you do that, I'm going to jump on to the next thing here. Yeah. And honestly, we kind of hinted at it um, a moment ago. And that was uh, Google scrambles to manually remove weird AI answers to the search. The company confirmed that it's taking a swift action to some of these bizarre responses. This here, is the, the thing I yeah. was mentioning. Uh, here, let me finish this up. Uh, so it says here that uh, AI overview project telling people to put glue on their pizza and they, it was suggesting that they eat rocks. So uh, this was, we mentioned this a moment ago. Uh, I think they've gotten some of this solved, but I'm telling you what, they're going to have to double down on some of these responses. So, did you find your, your link there? I did, but I was actually going to comment on your story. So what cracked oh, yeah. me up, great job on the verge, but look up at the hands and count the fingers. <laughs> They probably did it on purpose. It's definitely an AI. Generator. So what we're looking at for those listening is uh, two hands on a keyboard, and they've got seven fingers <laughs> on one and, uh, what, six on the other? Yeah. It's because and, AI uh, notoriously messes yep. up hands, right? Thanks. Yep. <laughs> so let me drop this in chat. Yep. And uh, audio emojis. We're kind of getting off track, but it's weird. And this is a uh, a Google... Sorry, this I is think an Android, it's an Android only thing. Why we have it, don't know, but uh, right. cool, I guess. Doug switching it up on us. So we'll try not to go off the rails too much. You know, we're just back off of our summer vacation, and uh, there we go. So, um, like I said, uh, when you call someone or someone calls you and you answer, you get uh, clapping, laughing. A party noise, which is the little confetti whistle thing. Okay. Uh, crying, which is a trombone. Uh, a fart emoji. And a sting, like a ba dum thing. So. Oh, this would be so annoying with certain people. Yeah, so I uh, actually, uh, someone called me the other day and I hit it with my cheek, I guess. And 
So it was very interesting. <laughs> I, I, that's all I have to say. My phone also has a temperature thermometer. That's kind of a gimmick. You know, back yeah. in the day, way back in the day, uh, we had what IR blasters you could control your TV with. And huh? I think every once in a while we get like, a, hey, maybe this is useful. Yeah. They're trying, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and, and don't get me wrong. Apple does the same thing. They got stupid stuff that people don't use either. Um, but yeah, but I'll have I, to call you sometime and play these for you. Uh, that's going to be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. All right. All right. Next, back on uh, track. Here we back go. Back on track. Okay. So along the same AI, um, you know, talk, as I mentioned, OpenAI released a new version of ChatGPT. They call it ChatGPT 4.0. Now, they did a demo. And in that demo, they show all kinds of cool stuff. And I will tell you, personally, I have messed with this thing. Uh, you can talk to it, and it's you can even interrupt it. Like, it's having a conversation with the person. Uh, when it launched, though, uh, there apparently was a feeling, and I kind of got it, was uh, the voice sounded an awful lot like Scarlett Johansson. So she came after them legally. Now, there is background on this, to be fair. At first, when I saw this, I was like, oh, man, she sued for... You know, Black Widow, Disney, maybe she's kind of so happy here, trying to get some money. To her credit, though, months before the release, OpenAI, Sam Altman, the head of OpenAI, contacted her people and asked, hey, we would love to license your voice for our next AI thing. And they said no. And I think they asked on like a couple of different occasions, and they were turned down both times. Okay? Yeah. Then, on the day of the release of version 4.0, he tweeted one word, her now for those of you who don't know he deleted that very quickly there's a movie called her starring scarlett johansson who is in that movie an ai that a guy falls in love with so there is probable cause here that they wanted to use her voice she said no and they did it anyway of course they released no we did not we used another voice actor which i'm sure they did that probably sounded a lot like her um i've heard people some people say well i don't think it sounded a lot like her i i think it it favors her. Well, they've tweaked it since then because she threatened to sue them. Uh, so number one, Doug, have you seen the movie her number two? Uh, did you yes. hear this voice? What did you think? Do you think it even sounded like her? Um, I have heard the voice. I think it's pretty close, you know, I think in the so world too. of uh, law enforcement, uh, you look for a reasonable suspicion and then probable cause. I think it's all there at least to have a, <sighs> cause take I take it to court and let the yeah. uh, jury, uh, take a look at it. i agree because when i first it. heard it i was like i don't know this might be a reach it seems very but, very similar and this is from the movie her i opened up a uh right there there's a photo in the website yeah Walking it's just Phoenix suspicious. is in it uh yeah. he falls in love with an ai on the computer it is a great movie except the ending is stupid i'm just gonna say that. yeah it, it's typical indie film it just kind of falls oh, yeah. flat but it's a great concept it's really good they all he does a great job she does a great job as the ai um it really is very good. But the fact that they asked her to use her voice and then he tweeted what he did and then deleted it, I think she has probable cause to, to say yep. that they stole her voice. So, you know. Yep, I agree. All right. Next one. Ooh, we were talking about this not too long ago. The fan made Fallout 2 first person remake. Now, you did a retro review. We've done a few of these uh, on the side of Fallout 2. Explain, if people don't know what Fallout 2 is, ex you did the, the the review for it. Give us the walkthrough. What was it originally, and what is it to this? So uh, Fallout 2, obviously the second in the series, uh, came back in 97. I'll have to look that up. You know, I did the review, and uh, I wrote a lot of things down and then forgot where I wrote it down at. <laughs> but uh, it's a uh, top-down version. It's not a first-person shooter. It's uh, isometric. Ac yep, uh, action points, uh, kind of exploring. I believe it's uh, you uh, kind of left this tribe to uh, repopulate and go on an adventure. I'm probably failing now, but uh, we'll get back to. Uh, it's a really, really good game. A really good uh, addition into the Fallout series. So this team has uh, decided to try to turn it into a first-person shooter known as Project Arroyo. Arroyo. Aro, I'm terrible. It's hard to say it. Yeah. A-R-R-O-Y-O. -R -R um, it looks Aereo. really good from the screens I've seen. 
Yeah. Uh, some of the classic uh, monsters you see, you got the classic uh, Pip-Boy controls on your screen we're seeing down there with your action points, your inventory map, and so forth and so forth. Yeah. There's been mods up to this point, um, but they've used older older engines. I think this one's using uh, a newer engine. Oh, here we go. I found an actual... I think it, it might be tied to the Fallout 4 um, engine. engine. Yeah, the, it does look there we very go. similar. It looks amazing, honestly. Um, the ones that they had before were kind of like Doom-like, like very grainy. And they just took the original game and they just like gave you a first-person view. This looks like a complete total remake. Um, it kind of has the feel of Fallout Vegas, but better graphics. Uh, it's just impressive, <laughs> honestly. Very impressive. So, yeah. You you know, and uh, they just released an update to Fallout 4. We've already talked about this, but I have to say it again. There was uh, such a huge project of Fallout... Uh, London. London, thank you very much. Um, hours and hours and hours of work, uh, getting ready to drop, and then boom, uh, Bethesda releases an update, Fallout 4. So here's my thought. The 50-50... Did Bethesda do it on purpose because it was such a good piece of work? I mean, it's almost its own entire different game. Or were they just updating for the show coming out on Amazon I, Video? That's, I think they that's were, my thoughts. I think they were updating for the show because, okay. and just a byproduct of it because they've always been very friendly to mods. They've allowed these. They don't go after them and sue them like Nintendo does. Uh, so my take on it is I just think it was a, just an innocent byproduct of them okay. chasing the yep. money from the show. That's my two cents. Just because Bethesda's never been too picky about not letting uh, players modify their games. So why why would they care up to this point if they haven't cared you right. know, up that till now? Sense. So yeah. that's my take on it. But this is an interesting project. It'll be interesting to see how this this pans out, especially since you just did one of those retro reviews on it. Yeah, it looks really good. I'll have to play it from a totally different perspective now. So, Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd definitely try it. It looks good. If it has the action point, so I'm not going. It doesn't look like it. I think it's going to be more Fallout 4 is what nice. I think. Yeah, it looks like it has a Fallout 4 uh, Pip-Boy on his arm right there. Yeah, so. it does. And I think it's using that engine, which probably helps. All right. So we talked about that. Let's get into... Oh, movies. There's a yes. lot of good movies. This one, I don't know. Doug and I have played a lot of the aliens fire team elite. When I saw this trailer, it made me want to play the game again. This is alien oh, Romulus time. trailer, right? Yeah. So it takes us back to uh, space, obviously with the alien series. If you don't know what that is, uh, started with uh, Sigourney Weaver, lots of games, lots of movies. I uh, believe this one uh, stars uh, Kaylee Spaney. She has played in civil war. It's a movie that just came out this year. Uh, David Johnson, Archie Renault, not like big names that I know, but I still think they uh, have some really good uh, credits under their belt. They're trying to make it scary again. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do. The mood of the first one was pretty scary. I think they're trying to get back to that um, because it is. It's a creepy game. So kudos to them for, for doing that. This is supposed to pick up where the last Alien movie had left off. So they had a series of Prometheus, uh, and then uh, Covenant. Can't remember. Covenant, yep. And uh, they, they just went, those are all really good, by the way. I think this is supposed to pick up uh, where those left off and explain more about the origins of where these things come from. So I don't know. I think it looks pretty good. Um, it definitely looks scarier than the the last few that they've had. It's like they're getting back to the claustrophobia on the on the ship with Sigourney oh, yeah. Weaver, you know. So yeah, it makes me not even want to go into outer space ever. Yeah. <laughs> It does make me want to play the video game, though, and kill some aliens. You know, and uh, side note, it makes me wonder why uh, spaceship manufacturers don't put more lights in there. <laughs> <laughs> or emergency lighting systems. Emergency yeah. lighting systems. That's probably, well, you know, you got to say, you got to conserve energy, Doug. Come on now. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, right. In theaters this summer, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think, I think so. See, summer. we're doing good. We're uh, back and uh, we haven't stumbled kind of yet. Now, this next one's pretty big because there's yeah. a lot of content here. And I, I'm going to be the first to admit I got busy. I haven't seen all of these. This is some of the, I've heard of some of them in my game news, but I'm not up to date. So I'm going to apologize ahead of time. If I'm a little remiss on some of this and just kind of reading what's there, Doug, I don't know if you, did you watch this or not? I watched part of it. I couldn't watch all of it. Uh, it came out. I was uh, pretty busy at work. 
and uh, I caught bits and pieces. But what we're talking about is Summer Game Fest 2024. Mm -hmm. Lots of uh, announcements. hardware announcements for Xbox, uh, video game announcements, future projects. So we're just getting a little taste of stuff that's still in development. It's Microsoft sponsored. That's important to know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. uh, some of the stuff is coming to PlayStation as well. Yes. Uh, I'm sure we'll cover it in a future episode, but I think there's rumor that Xbox is trying to get away from hardware and go there software and development only. Yep. All kinds of rumors. Rumors, which I don't think they have in here, but it's worth mentioning. Uh, talking yep. about redoing we Halo. We may see that. In the, yep, right? Yep. I don't know if that's in here, is it? I don't know if that's... Uh, it was in another one, but it didn't have a lot of information, so I didn't want to throw that out there yet. Well, and but the big yeah. thing... It's that not only are they redoing Halo, but they were talking about it being released on PlayStation as well, which which would be huge news. That's never happened. <laughs> and it's the first one remastered. So exactly. Starting our PlayStation diehards on Halo. Exactly. Uh, so one of the first things here that they announced we've got playing here is Gears of War E-Day. This is the next installment. I loved the Gears game, and in my oh, opinion... Some of the best Xbox games. Uh, I, so I'm really excited. I, I got to admit, I did not. I, I played one. I played two. I played maybe part of three. I didn't get through the story. And I liked the story on them. So I, I think it's a great world. I'm glad they're doing it. And I, I, I look forward to trying it. I really liked them. Did you play this? Yeah. I love the horde mode, like with friends, too. That was oh, classic yes. with waves. Yeah. I only <laughs> played one and two. And that's kind of where I stopped. But really good gameplay. And of course, who doesn't want a chainsaw on the <laughs> bottom of their assault rifle? Of course. It's like, what's the point if you don't have a chainsaw on your gun? Right. So This looks but, awesome. Uh, graphically, it looks really good. You know, we're at the Xbox Series X and then PlayStation 5. So really good hardware under the hood. Yep. It'll be good. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. All right. There's a lot of these. So we're going to click through them as quickly as we can. Yeah, There's a new Xbox, a, right? Oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, no, I you got it. I was just going to say a real quick uh, console announcement. Uh, yep. Starts at one terabyte for 449 So one terabyte, that's just uh, Call of Duty only. You'll have to uninstall that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Un it's probably true. It's all those uncompressed files. But it has there no is also a two terabyte Galaxy Black Edition. So got and that's some options there. There's no, the big deal is there's there's an option for no drive on the xbox x now the xbox x is like the pro series the s is like the smaller one the mm -hmm. s has almost always been your only option if you want to go digital but now if you want a pro version you can go all digital that's why they have two terabyte models and one terabyte model so well you know that's going to be a reality because we've talked about uh, walmart best buy and others mm -hmm. are removing all their physical media so even if you have a cd dvd blu-ray drive there's nothing to put into it. That's right. So it's it's going to happen. I personally think the next generation, they may do an external disk drive, but I don't think it's going to be standard. I think it's going to go digital. That's yeah. my take. So that was a big deal. Uh, you know, it's interesting. All right. Next up, do you play Assassin's Creed at all? I have. So the last one I played was uh, Black Flag. Uh, oh, that's a good one. That's good. Uh, arguably the best one ever made. But uh, I, my my son would agree with you. He it loves is amazing. Flag. Yeah, it's really good. Now, I did not. After that was the Egypt one and the Greece one. I heard they were really good. I yep. didn't play them. Uh, to me, they get I love Assassin's Creed. Great story. Love the concept. I played the first one, the second one. I, I mean, I was die hard play these because the stories are so good. Lots of history. I just feel like the gameplay gets a little repetitive. It's the same thing. It Sneak. is. You know, you go up <laughs> yeah. to the eagle's roost, uh, yep. scan, and do these fall missions. Into, fall into the hay, oh, sneak yeah. around, or just full on take them head on and just beat the crap out of them when you get, you know, powered enough. This one takes place in Japan, though. It's a samurai one. Yeah. So, so I think that's kind of what they're doing. And for me, it, it's not enough to bring me back. It's just different. Uh, ages different mm -hmm. uh, cultures and i'm kind of like uh it's the same one but now i just have a different uniform different weapon i tried to play valhalla because it was viking and i liked it it was beautiful it was fun but I, it didn't snag me it didn't make me want to yeah. like keep I, I didn't feel like i wanted to keep playing it so uh but they're still great games i, I admire them you know maybe i'll revisit them someday but uh we'll see what else we got here 
All right, the next one. Have you heard of Avowed? I have not. It looks very RPG-like. Uh, got some mages and some uh, weapon abilities. Yeah. I know nothing about it. Well, then I'm going to read it to you. <laughs> hey, thank you. I appreciate it. It says here that it's made by Obsidian. They make good games, by the way. Upcoming first-person RPG still arriving in 2024. We'll see about that. Uh, though I heard from sources a few months ago that they was targeting for a November release. Last year, we got a good look at Avow and it promised a 2024 release. We'll see. Uh, this seems like a Obsidian's version of Skyrim. Now, I did read that the map on this thing is supposed to be really, really large. Game looks good. It's, yeah, it you know. Does. I'd, I'd give it a shot. So it'll be interesting to see if it's an Xbox only exclusive because um, Obsidian releases on both platforms. So yeah. we'll see. Uh, next one we have is Life is Strange. Now, I've played a couple of these I as uh, free games on the Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. I fun. thought they were pretty cool. Uh, yeah. They've got kind of a comic feel to them, mm-hmm. comic book feel to them. Yeah. So. And Square Enix, I mean, good Lord, they their good history of games is great. So. And the story is really cool. Um, you know, these are, I, I don't think I did the follow up. I know I beat the first one. I started yeah. the second. I don't know if I continued on, but, uh, these games have kind of brought on a cult following mainly the decisions you make it and the way the story can branch and take is really kind of cool with these. I like that. Yep. Definitely going down. Uh, there's another addition into uh, flight simulator 2024. Yeah. I know, uh, they've tried to stay current. Uh, they had the, or Thorno Copter from Dune, if I'm saying that right. I'm going to um, assume you are. <laughs> yeah. These games are huge. Yeah. Uh, these flight sim games. People are, like love these things, and they're super accurate. People are building things in their homes that are like these massive simulator rooms mm. <laughs> dedicated to this. Uh, it's very impressive. And the fact that it uses real-time weather data. I, I think it's cool that people... like. If you go online, if there's ever like an active hurricane, I know we're heading into hurricane season now. If there's a hurricane actually going on in the real world, people will hop in their planes on the video game, fly to that part of the map, and try to fly through the hurricane. Because yes. all of the weather system is tied into Microsoft's Bing weather AI system. And all of the ground now is drawn through their satellite data uh, that they have. So it's funny, they're putting missions in it. Like VIP delivery. It's like they're trying to make it more interesting than just flying the plane. Now you yeah. have to do deliveries or do rescues uh, on boats that are sinking and search and rescue. So it's interesting that they're doing missions. It's kind of cool. Yeah, you know what this reminds me of is way back in the day, and I'm looking up uh, when it came out, Simcopter. Oh, yeah, I remember uh, that. It was terrible graphics. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Terrible graphics. Yeah. But you uh, get in your little helicopter, you go do yeah. uh, missions like that. So I remember cool. that. It does kind of have that feel. Now, the one thing I like about Flight Simulator, and I used to follow this guy a lot, but air traffic controllers. That's all this guy did on his YouTube channel was air traffic control for uh, Microsoft Flight Sim. Cool. The funniest thing I've ever watched. That's really I cool. Mean, it's That's great. awesome. That's really neat. So, yeah, the, the, and the graphics are just getting insane with this game. Oh, yeah. You have right. to have a pretty decent PC to push these, too. So I'm sure they're fine on Xbox, but I've heard that it can, it can push your machine if you've got a gaming machine. Yeah. I'd All have right. to get uh, a desktop, I'm sure, for that. So. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, Fable, yeah. I love the series, like the original. And this is a, a retelling. It says it's now set for 2025, but they're still showing it because people are interested into it. They even showed footage from last summer. Um, focus on the characters and the story. The fan of Fable will be centered on a hero named Humphrey who will be forced out of retirement when a mysterious figure from his past threatens Albion's very existence. It appears that the choice, once again, play will be a big part of it. Because if you remember, uh, choices you make in the game, you could choose to be good, you could be bad. I really like these games a lot. I'm just curious as to like how faithful they'll be to the original. You know? Yeah, I mean, because well, I believe, if I'm not wrong, it has a pretty diehard... Uh, fan base it from does. the original games so there's a lot riding on redoing this and getting all those fans to love it again and new fans to join it yeah it looks gorgeous it really does look it, nice the graphics look amazing yes yeah but it was all about choice before but the thing is this came out at a time when choice i mean we have choice in skyrim you know we have choice in fallout choice games and branching dialogue have really come a long way and this this bad boy, I don't know. I, I don't know how it'll resonate. 
it'll either be really, really good or it'll pale in comparison to the ones that have already improved upon, you know, what made Fable Fable. Yeah. That's my take. Yep. So we'll see. So scrolling down, uh, this one I'm kind of excited about. It's uh, Perfect Dark. It in is 64, a, uh, I played kind of a continuation of Perfect Dark from 2000 on the N64. Yeah. A great game. I love the combat in that. I wonder how this will be. It looks beautiful. It looks very good. <laughs> wow. It's the first time I'm seeing the, the... So it's very futuristic for those of you not on camera uh, or you're just listening. So it, it does look pretty. It does look pretty. I don't know if they have any combat in it or not. Let me skip ahead on the video. Yeah, you, good old-fashioned running against walls parkour. That's what I think oh, of. Good stuff. Huh, looks good. And check it looks out. like some of the classic weapons from the uh, first game. Uh, the X-ray vision mode from the first game. So a lot of uh, good stuff coming back from all the way back in 2000. It's kind of like the movies. They're just remaking things now. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But and that's what I'm worried about. You know, we have the die far die hard fans, yeah, uh, from games and movies, and I'm just worried that they're not going to do it justice. Yeah, I, I agree. have some core memories of things back then. Yeah, me too. Uh, next up, uh, the add-on for another add-on. They've already had one, but this is an add-on for Diablo Four. Now we've talked about this before. Beautiful game. Obviously, it's a Blizzard somatic, which are just you could watch them. They're like movies. If you ever want to get bored, you can go on YouTube and just watch Blizzard uh, somatics. And they're just, they look like films. They're just incredible. Oh, yeah. uh, so of course it looks great. Uh, I still have the feeling I got really tired of four wore out for me very quickly. It's a lot of grinding. It is a lot of grinding, but you know, what's funny. Three was, it, I enjoyed three better and yeah. two, two and three. Uh, I don't know. There's just something about, what they did with the balance, the speed, and all this stuff uh, with four that I just didn't get into. But you know, they've got all these add-ons. I, I think it's great they're supporting it, but they're, you know, they're trying to keep people playing the game is what's happening because a lot of people fizzled out on this. So, yep, yeah, we'll see how that does. Uh, the next one I never played Ooh. it back in the day. It is the Age of Mythology retold, and it came out originally on uh, PC. And yeah. I'll have a date for you. It was based on Age of Empires, except mythologies like Greek, yeah. Roman, Minotaurs. Uh, that so sort of thing. 2002 is the original date for yep. Age of Mythology. Yep. So they're remaking it. Looks pretty awesome. I think it, it does. Good. You know, I looked at this. I am a huge Age of Empires fan, mm -hmm. uh, Command and Conquer fan, but just the the mythology and the gods thing never really got my attention. Yeah. That's I kind of like more traditional units yeah. and fighting. Yeah, so the magic and the, the gods. It's cool. Again, they're revisiting everything. Now, this one is interesting to me. It's, oh, it's War of Warcraft. Uh, wow. <laughs> World of Warcraft. I cannot talk. Uh, uh, yeah, but this is a date announced uh, where they had a, cin uh, a cinematic, and it says it'll launch on April 26th uh, in, you know, this is going to kick off a major new arc for the game. This game's been around forever. My curious thing on this when they showcase this, uh, is it going to, can you play WoW on an Xbox now? Or is this PC only? I, was, I don't know. I didn't get much clarity in the article. No, and it doesn't really talk about it either. So, yeah. All right. Oh, you're excited. Probably about oh. this. Yeah. So uh, one thing to tell everybody is I haven't played Fallout 76 uh it came out a couple years ago, but then the show kind of helped me get into it, and I've been playing it nonstop, unfortunately, and uh, fortunately. And Fallout so, uh, seventy six is a it's a it's a multiplayer version of it, right? Yep, yeah. and that's kind of what uh, drew a lot of the diehard fans away from it because Fallout four was so good, but it was a solo thing. But I think as people started to play it, they found that it was really fun, and uh, I found the same thing. So. Back to this, Fallout 76 is going to get its first map expansion. And the big thing, I think, is you get to play as a ghoul in the game. Oh, that's cool. This show is really going to drive the popularity on this. They're, they're striking while the iron's hot, which is pretty smart, actually. Yeah, and I saw that the season two for the show is uh, just started development. So we should hopefully have it uh, next year, maybe in the spring. 
Yeah, they're gonna. They said they're gonna try to put it out as humanly fast as humanly possible. Yep. Yeah. So this is good. All right. Add on four seventy six. Boy, this announcement just kept going on forever. Um, Starfield. Why not? Yeah. Shattered space add on. And what it says that they just did one in May where they did like quality of life improvements on the map. Oh, I did, and they improved it so much. Oh, did you try it? I tested it oh, out. Yeah. It, it's oh, new mapping so, system. You so can much decorate better. your and ship. Yep. Yep. Where this one, uh, darker, it had this, this add on has Shattered a darker skies, tone. Yep. Yeah. It has a darker tone in the main Starfield campaign. No release date was revealed, but it is coming sometime in 2024. And then it goes on to, to Basically, it's adding a story element to it. Now, I do know they're working on, they mentioned adding vehicles to ground, like when you go on planets, which is really cool because walking everywhere sucks. So they're gonna, oh, yeah. I'm wondering if that, you know, that element will be added to this story. I'm excited. I'll jump back into it. This is a great game. Yeah, I like it a lot. Now, there was some rumors about being able to have your own uh, space station. That'd and it cool. kind of looks like we're looking at a lot of space station uh, videos in this Sweet. trailer. If that's true, that's exciting. I like that. Then you could start your own trucking business because I yeah. know a lot of people truck uh, stuff across. Mm-hmm. That's what they like to do. That's really cool. I'm excited that they're still developing this and pushing it because you know they could just abandon it and go all straight on to Elder Scrolls, but they haven't fully done that. They still have a team and doing the add-ons for this. So this is good. Yeah. What else we got here? Ah, Doom, Dark Ages. It looks very interesting. Uh, watching the trailer, uh, I'll have you keyed up there, but you're kind of going back in time a little bit. You've still got some uh, modern weapons, but... It says it takes the franchise back to a medieval-like era with the Doom Slayer killing enemies in a more fantasy realm. That's, I, didn't, mm-hmm. I did not see Doom going this direction. Uh, in that way, it seems to serve as a prequel of sorts. It still looks as gruesome and glorious ever, though. All, also, you can fly on some of the cyberpunk dragons. <laughs> I did not see this game. I did not direction. see this coming at all. I mean, <laughs> it's medieval, but you still have your classic double barrel shotgun and stuff like that. <laughs> Which, you know, it's, it's a cool story uh, in that they opened a gate to hell on Mars is, is what it was. But it's, it's just crazy where they're going with this now. He even has a fur cloak in the back. Yes. It looks yeah, gorgeous, though. It looks great. Uh, <laughs> Look the, the BFG gun. 3000 or whatever it looks <laughs> like. Yeah. The gun he was shooting, uh, ammo is is skulls that get ground up by <laughs> blades and thrown at the enemies. It's over the top. I would totally play this. Uh, it looks great. You know, not that I'm scared of horror movies or stuff, but it was just kind of too gruesome. Lots of. Did you play Doom Eternal or the remake? Did you play this? At all. Yeah, I mean, the gore was crazy. It was I mean, I appreciate a little gore in my games, too, but... <laughs> it was pretty large. nuts. It's almost it, like you have to wipe your glasses <laughs> clean. I beat the, uh, the the Doom remake. I I did not start Doom Eternal, but I want to. Uh, I'll definitely play this. These, these look fun. I don't know, 2025. They're doing a lot of stuff ahead of time. That's interesting. Yeah. The next right. one looks interesting to me. What it is, is called... Uh, okay. No one wants to die. What is and this? it's kind of a mix between uh, Fifth Element, Bioshock, Blade Runner. You really? know that very cyberpunk esque futuristic uh, <laughs> feel to it. Looks like Fifth Element almost uh, with the world that they have there. Oh wow, I've not heard of this. So it says here, looks like a slick, moody blend of Bioshock, Blade Runner, and the Fifth Element, which I just said. So I'll be buying it. The reviewer says uh, it's out on June seventeenth on Steam and Xbox and PlayStation. Wow, how did I miss this? It looks really good, and uh, they're showing a orchestra, so it must have huh. some really good music. Like you good know, we soundtrack. don't want a copyright violation or nothing, but uh, yeah, showing it good there. It looks like they did a lot of the semantic. I wanted to see a little bit more gameplay. Yeah, there's not a lot of gameplay shown there. Like, is it a first-person shooter? Is it a? It doesn't really tell you. And what a great name. Nobody wants to die. <laughs> it is. Steam, uh, PS5, and the Xbox uh, right. Series X and Series S. So. All right. Black Ops. Doing it now, again. Now, I've read man. some funny stories, and I've heard about my buddy complaining. Call of Duty? Uh, yep. Yeah, Call of Duty, usually in their Warzone modes and other modes, they have 
some kind of quick game to release their new game, if that makes sense. So there's some kind of special event in there. Well, I guess this event was a uh, nuclear submarine, and uh, he's been complaining that he can't unlock it because everybody else is unlocking it. Gotcha. Yeah, there's been a lot of complaints about Call of Duty. I don't know. I kind of soured on it a long time ago. And know. Call of Duty, to me, like I said earlier, takes up so much hard drive space. It does. I, I heard Literally, on this one, uh, Saddam Hussein's the bad guy on this one. Yeah, so we're getting more modern times in the Black Ops yeah. uh, storyline. Yeah. I mean, it looks good, yeah. but I don't know. It's a rinse and repeat. I'm just not... I don't know. It's kind of the same, same thing. All yeah, time. it's more of the same. They don't surprise me each time. It's but... going to have the zombies mode. and Which is cool. That's fun to do yeah, with friends. Yeah. What else do we have? Uh, then they talk about how to watch. Our... Are we at the... Yeah, we're at the end of the list. We're Ooh. at the end, yeah. Man, Yowzers. that was uh, quite a doozy. Yowzers. That is crazy. All right, so let's. Man, we're at our 50 minute mark here. See, guys, we're going to give you a, a double dose of an episode here. We won't take too much time. We're going to catch up for a moment. So I'm going to start with something that's new. I upgraded my mic. Uh, I walked away. It sounds great. From my, I was going to say, does it sound okay? I can't really hear. Um, it's an MV7 Plus is what this is. It's a Shure. Try to get a picture of this bad boy here. I did a lot of research on this microphone mm-hmm. uh, before I did it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm happy with it so far. And once... We hear this podcast, we'll be able to hear what it's like. But I, I walked away from my, my Yeti after so long. So that's kind of new. This is the first episode with that. So since, you know, we took our little break, this is something new. Yeah. Um, what, what's it looks good. Very yeah, uh, stylish. It, it, it's got a little, is that a light on it? It does. And it pulses. It's, it's really good. I'm really happy with it so far. Uh, yeah. A lot of options with it. So this was well, a kind you of a need a pretty dedicated mic because you have video work. conferences and stuff all the time. Yep. I do yep. videos for teaching at universities. Yep. Uh, I also for yep. work, I'm basically glued to my computer and in zoom calls all day. So, you know, my setup that we use here for the podcast, I use it for everything. So yeah, that's, that's the way I justify it. Got to have some good <laughs> hardware there. Yep. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thankful that I, I do. So this, hopefully this sounds good. Uh, I'll let you know, uh, it, as my impressions continue to go, this is my first time really using so it far. for yeah. our show. Yeah. So, uh, this, so this is something new. Um, what else is new with you, man? Like what, any other projects or things that you've been working on? Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, still thinking about this iPhone. we talked about it earlier and with the, uh, addition of the AI tomorrow, I'm going to watch that keynote address. But then the iPhone 15, you know, we talked about I had the uh, Apple Watch on my desk, ready to go, and I really got impatient. But uh, there was also concerns of the iPhone 15 having some battery issues, some software issues, which Apple, of course, took uh, care of immediately. But now I'm really ready to uh, switch, I believe. The iPhone 16 is coming out, and um, I have a new job this year. I started in February. Uh, My new job, I'm the only... (laughs) I'm like the only Android holdout. That's a- and it, it's kind of not peer pressure, but it's, I want to be able to share, you know, they said, can we airdrop stuff to you? I said, no. airdrop. My phone doesn't even know what that word means. So, <laughs> so all these people want to airdrop their contact to me. I said, nope. Can't happen. That's so funny. So it's kind of, I need to upgrade for myself, but I need to upgrade to get along with all the other people in the building. Here we go again, guys. We'll see if Doug makes that jump. Maybe he will this time. We got close last time. He actually had it. It was on my, so this year I have told myself I'll be patient. And I know that Apple, if there's issues with their phone, they are very good about fixing it. Yeah. So I believe this is the year. We're not going to make a dedicated episode yet until maybe I'm holding it in my hand. (laughs) But uh, we're not going to talk about it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, so so Doug's getting ready to switch again. Yeah, we won't have to worry about the the blue bubbles and the green. Of course, it sounds like with RCS we wouldn't have to worry about it anyway. Now my wife got an iPhone 15, and I'm pretty jelly. That thing's uh, pretty sweet. You know, she got the base model. She's not into all the. Take picture taking and specs and cool stuff and doesn't have a big head, so she doesn't need a big phone. Yeah. So I uh, will that probably get the uh, 16 Pro Max, you know, mm-hmm. and a watch to go with it. Very cool. You're going to do a that's, color. Um, yeah. So that's what uh, Google is known for big time. The pixels yeah. are known for really bright colors. I'm sure Apple has something similar. I always put a case on mine, so it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, you know, I have a blue uh, OtterBox on my Pixel 8 Pro. Mm-hmm. 
So I don't know. That's cool. Um, other trips, uh, we have talked about going to uh, Micro Center. So that seems really awesome. I've went there once before, nothing against my wife, but uh, kind of not with another techie. You kind of just kind of stroll through and look. So with, I believe, you and some other people going, we'll be able to talk tech, talk uh, hardware, software, cool stuff like that. Yep. And it should be a good day. So I'll let you talk about that. Uh, no, no. So we're talking about maybe this will be our next episode. We're going to try to make a trip there. Now, if you don't know what Micro Center is, if you have one near you, uh, it's like best buy but like way better it's more nerdy uh you can build your own computer like you can literally walk around and say i want i want this motherboard i want this video card i want this and you can either have them build it or they have stations for you to do so Uh, my brother frequents it especially with all of his arcade rebuilds that they have these places are huge there's just tons to look at and you can just browse uh everything that you can possibly imagine 3d printers now have you ever been to a micro center yeah, yeah. Okay, I was gonna oh, say yeah. I'm sure you have. I love the it. one that uh, is in our area. Very, very impressive. You know, I was very overwhelmed. Lots and lots of stuff to look at. Beautiful displays. Yeah. You know, it's not just a product sitting on a counter or a shelf. It's uh, in its own display. Uh, backlighting. It's just crazy. Yeah, they they have really really cool things. We'll take some footage if we go, and we'll we'll talk about what's there, and then maybe if we pick up anything, we'll do like a pickup video. I mean, I've been I've been toying with the idea. I always have like little projects, and I've been toying with making a a home file server or a NAS, a network attack storage. Where I'm kind of on the fence is, do I want to do it with a Raspberry Pi in Linux because of the stability and open source and stuff like that? Or do I want to stick with something that's more Windows and do it with a small, you know, depending on what they have here, I, I may end up picking up something, you know, here to do that. And if so, well, I'll talk about how I did it and what what I decided to uh, to go for. Um, but, you know, there's always little projects. It's great. If you always want to dabble with little projects, going here is a great way to do that because they have stuff that you're just not going to see at a Best Buy. Uh, or other places, and so that's oh, what we're going to yeah. outline. One so I'm looking forward th- to it. Yeah. One of the big things that caught my eye was all the 3D printing filament oh, printers and all the accessories and stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, that spool of uh, filament caught my eye. They have a huge uh, 3D printing section. Oh, yeah. They've got all kinds of stuff. They have the the cherry switches for keyboards. If you want to mm-hmm. like yep. replace your keyboards and customize your keyboards, they have, if you're building an arcade, the arcade sticks, if you want to build those screens, you know, for arcade sticks, you name it switches. And if you're into wiring and it's, this place is, you can totally geek out at this place. So we'll, we're going to probably check it out soon and we'll make it one of our episodes. And we'll showcase what they have there. Uh, and this, this kind of, kind of give them a a plug because it's a cool place we're going to do like a like a little mini road trip and that'll probably be the next thing that we do uh now the last thing i want to close out on is something that i actually tested this weekend i actually had a few minutes to breathe work's been insane and i I just wanted to chill out and try something new and and i think i had texted this to you because i didn't know how it how well it would work or not and i will tell you what i was pretty blown away at how well this worked but essentially, and we've talked about this before, you can, if you if you use Steam to buy video games on your PC, you can have this app called Steam Link. And I put it on a Raspberry Pi before. I put it on my Steam Deck. And the idea is you can stream games from your computer in like your office area to anywhere. They have Steam Link for Apple TV. That's so crazy. I downloaded it, as this video we're showing here from uh, Convinced Tech. I downloaded Steam Link. and I synced an xbox series controller to my apple tv and then i i streamed games from my pc and it was it was absolutely flawless my entire steam library was playable in my living room and the cool thing is you can also if you want to do keyboard and mouse so for example we have a friend of ours that loves civilization if he wanted to play in his living room and had an Apple TV, he had, if he had a keyboard and mouse, he could play in his living room on any TV. This essentially extends your, your Steam library to anywhere in your house. So it worked flawlessly. It, it, it worked way better than I thought it was going to. So, so I wanted to share that. Yeah. I, since you uh, did this, I had a couple questions. Do you have to have your Steam library on your computer turned on on the same Wi-Fi? 
Uh, no, it actually will work. Well, it helps to be on the same network. Let me let me start with that. So it's not okay. like PlayStation Remote. You okay. can do it with Wi-Fi. It, you will get a little bit of lag if you do. I did it wired on both. I have I plugged my Apple TV into my router, and then my gaming machine is also plugged in, and you get the best experience with that. And that, uh, but I'll tell you, what, if you have it plugged in wired, I I played, I think, uh, what is that game called? It's very fast first person shooter. Uh, uh, Modus, uh, um, ah, oh, it's gonna kill me now. You would know. Anyway, it's like a Doom game. Uh, I'm, I'm getting tired. I'm sure I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, Protus. I think that's what it's called. Okay. I guess my question while you're looking that up was, can yeah. you play it in a hotel or somewhere? You have to be on the same Wi-Fi as your computer. I believe you have to be on the same network. Okay. But okay. don't quote me on that. I, I haven't tested it. I know with the um playstation you can you know just do that from anywhere in the world yeah uh but with this i don't know i'm pretty sure you have to be on the same same wi-fi unless you set up like some type of a you know uh, proteus that's what it's called Jeez. oh it looks Sorry. interesting it was, it was driving here it is proteus now this game is very fast paced um I mean, it's extremely fast paced and I, I played it on purpose because I wanted to see if I could get it to lag and, oh, uh, and it's gory. It's, it's basically doom. It's a new version of doom. Thing with very that. good. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but I tell you what, uh, I never dropped frames. Uh, my controller was always in sync and it's, it's a fast a retro game. look to it. it. It's supposed to. It's supposed oh, to. Okay. Yeah, yep. this just came it out uh, yeah. in 2022. But I, I used this to try to push it. I wanted something with really, you know, I didn't want to play like a map turn-based game. And I pushed it hard. And I, I'll tell you what, that Apple TV, it, it, it kept up and did better on the streaming than my Raspberry Pi ever did. Or I hate to say it, even my Steam Deck. So if you have an Apple TV and you have a gaming machine, you like to play video games, give it a shot. Nope. When you say Apple TV, that is like a streaming box for your television, right? That is correct. Okay. Uh, think of it like a Roku. For those out there that may not know. Uh, now, I've looked at an Apple TV. The uh, apps that came on our TV, they just seem very laggy. They run really slow, and they're powered by Android. Not that that's a bad thing, but I think you've told me before that these Android TV apps don't get updated as often as they should. Whenever they put the apps on the televisions, that's one of the downsides is they, first of all, they don't use a very fast processor. So you'll get, you know, you'll get stuttering. Then they don't keep them updated. And what I mean by that is the, their package or version of Hulu or Netflix or Disney plus or HBO max, they don't keep them patched. Right? Oh, okay. So you're going to have that TV for a while. Then after a little while, you're going to start having issues. You're going to have to reboot the TV to clear the cache because they don't put memory in them. It's better to have a dedicated box if you're into streaming. A Roku is amazing. The Amazon, uh, they have a Fire box. It's amazing. It's good. The Apple TV, in my opinion, is the best one. Uh, it okay. is hands down, fast processor. All the apps stay up to date on it. It's like a tank. And and the cool thing is they're adding now more apps from the App Store, very similar to phones. That's why Steam Link was able to be available on this thing. And I, you're able to sync a control to it. What I loved was my Xbox controller. I never knew this. Once I synced it to it, I could actually navigate all those apps like Netflix oh, with wow. my Xbox controller. <laughs> it was pretty cool. It was pretty and cool. now I'm sure it has some uh, stuff with the iPhone. So if I do, in fact, switch... That'd be a pretty good companion piece to it. The, the best part is you can screen share your phone okay. or any Apple device. Yeah, I'm used to, to a your Google TV. Cast with the Android. So, like what we've done, it's like Google Cast, but it's with all Apple products. So, for example, if okay. we've gone on a family vacation before and we all want to show each other pictures, you know, we'll just you you swipe at the top right of your iPhone and then you just throw it onto the Apple TV, and then oh, we have a we just it's like a slideshow and we share real time the photos that are on our phone from like our family vacation for example that sounds great so it's really cool and it's uh i'm looking i think uh a15 bionic chip so it's got some internals that uh, make it pretty quick that's why it's fast it's got and that's what makes it better than the televisions is that it's got a processor in it it's got more cash uh, and it's able to it's more zippy it's just more it's responsive and- yeah yeah that's got to be our biggest complaint so far we got uh, a new tv recently and 
it's just so, so slow. You know, it's a new TV, but it takes forever, you know, to load Hulu and yep. Netflix and HBO and all that stuff. I have a TV in every room in the house and all one, two, at least four of them have all the apps built in. I just don't use them. I just disable them. I don't ever just mess so with slow. them. Yeah. And I just got an Apple TV for every room in the house because it's just not, it's not even worth it. Uh, hands down, I've had great experience with you. This this is the device you want to be using. If you want something that you don't want to have to futz around with and that's not going to break. It's yeah. a tank. It really works well. It looks good too. It's uh, very minimal. Yeah, it's it's nice and the controls are nice. It even has a, the best part about this was uh, I was talking to my father-in-law and the, his big thing was if I want to search something, I have to, if I want to know what a movie service is on, I have to go and search it in individual apps. This has an aggregator in it, meaning it's got Siri integration built into it. So you can talk to the remote and say, uh, I want play die hard. It'll go find it and play for you. Oh, right? nice. Yeah. But it also has, if you go to the search function, every single app you have on here, Netflix, Hulu, it'll search all of them. So if I said John Wick, it will pop up and say, well, you can rent it from us for two ninety nine from the yeah. Apple store, or you can open it in this service and it lists as Hulu has it. Oh, no, that's fair. It nice. searches across yeah. all of them, which makes searching so much easier. That's the other huge benefit to this over others is that this has the aggregated searching. Now, I haven't looked at a Roku box in a while. Maybe Roku has that, but they didn't for quite a long time. I may have to look at this when we go to uh, Micro Center then. You just don't tell your wife. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to go Apple she, crazy, uh, aren't you? the credit card bill. That'll be okay. <laughs> you just have to hide it from her, Doug. Come on, man. Yeah, that's hard. All right. All right. So, wow. I think we hey. made up for lost time, yeah. right? We're at an hour now, an hour and six minutes. So we apologize for being long-winded today, but hey, everybody, we missed you. So we wanted to spend a little more quality we time. We had to with catch you. up. Uh, I felt it went well. You know, I did miss doing the shows. We missed out on a couple articles, but we covered the main topics since we've been gone. Uh, but like always, uh, like, subscribe, uh, check out that store. We got some really good stuff for this summer. And uh, winter's coming up, you know. I mean, a couple more months, but we got some hoodies and uh, uh, it'll be here before you know it. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The cicadas will be gone and it'll be cold and you're going to need a hoodie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode number 16. We will see you guys next week now that we are back and we appreciate you hanging in there with us and we will talk to you soon. See ya. Thank you.